The incredible scene in Oklahoma caught on surveillance, a man armed with a shotgun confronting a mother and daughter inside of their store. But the women didn't back down. They grabbed their guns. Here's ABC's Zachary Keish with the late details. He was armed and dangerous. Police say that's a thief strapped with a shotgun robbing this Tulsa, Oklahoma liquor store. It looks like he's about to get away with it. But watch, as the crook turns away, the mother-daughter duo grab guns of their own. One of the biggest players in the volunteer tourism sector, New Zealand-based International Volunteer HQ, will soon stop placements in overseas orphanages criticised for child exploitation. There's growing concern that orphanages in some countries are simply becoming a money-making endeavour. Chris Chang reports. The marketing sells a life-changing experience, but for some it can be a rude awakening. ginger and lemon tea or a squeeze of lemon or lime in your water. Um, fruit flavoured drinks such as fruit cordials, squashes, these are all acidic. A shocking case of road rage has been caught on camera at Windale near Newcastle. A 51-year-old man is seen being kicked while on the ground by a group of people after he crashed his car into a fence on Tuesday night. The video shows a boy kicking the vehicle while the man is attacked. He eventually got up and was able to walk back to his car. A manhunt is underway as police try to work out what led to the violent confrontation. We're learning more about what life is like now for those 13 children rescued from the House of Horrors. They all have their own aspirations and uh, their own interests. And uh, now they may have an opportunity to, to address those, which is really exciting. Lawyers for the seven eldest children are sharing details of their progress at Corona Medical Center. They've learned how to use iPads and they've watched Harry Potter movies for the first time in their lives. Hashtag boycott NRA. Companies being urged to cut ties with the gun rights group. So far, a handful are doing just that. Three rental car companies, Enterprise, Alamo, and National, along with First National Bank of Omaha, have all announced that their relationships with the NRA are over. Enterprise is the parent company of the three car brands, and First National is one of the country's largest privately held banks. A Gold Coast man is fighting for life after a road rage attack on the M1. Okay, Brock Prime remains in a coma here at the Gold Coast University Hospital with severe head and leg injuries. His family have told Seven News he suffered a fractured skull, brain damage and a broken leg when he was set upon around 9.30 last night. They're now pleading for witnesses to come forward as police try to track down those responsible. And even though one by themselves might be bad, if you're having four, you know, two, three, four, five of these a day, you can actually cause very severe damage to your teeth. Mother Tina Rang takes aim and fires multiple rounds. I saw the shotgun, I saw him, and I just started to shoot. The alleged robber returns, shot in the leg and limping, but he won't give up. We were wrestling for the gun. My thoughts were just empty the gun, empty the gun, empty the gun. That's all I could think of was just to empty the gun. He wrestles the gun away, pistol whips her, and tries to go after her daughter, Ashley Lee. She 
shaking and in shock. A man is comforted by emergency services, metres from where his friend was bashed and left for dead. He's extremely ill in hospital and uh, we'd like to get to the bottom of what happened. So would Brock Prime's friends and family. It's the most sickening thing. How can you... There's... There's no words. I thought I knew a lot. Um, I had a few misconceptions about volunteerism. Hannah Reid felt so concerned about what she saw on her volunteer placement in Cambodia, she lasted for just a week. Volunteers breaching child protection policies, um, heard about volunteers being left in charge of classrooms entirely on their own, with a classroom of students who don't speak the same language. I just want you to understand um, just what special individuals they are. After all those years of solitude and captivity, they're also getting into shape, playing sports and exercising, and making their own decisions. That in of itself is kind of a, a new experience for them, understanding that they do have rights and they do have a voice. So that's a big deal. Deciding what they're gonna read, deciding what they're gonna wear. The car conglomerate has a deal that offered discounts to members of the NRA. Those deals will end on March 26th. And the bank has a credit card arrangement with the group, with its ads calling it the official credit card of the NRA. The decisions come in the wake of the deadly school shooting at Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. 17 people were killed and 15 others wounded in the largest mass school shooting in the U.S. since Sandy Hook. Today, they stayed by his bedside. He's fighting, he's definitely a fighter, so hopefully, fingers crossed, he's gonna wake up. But it's unlikely the 29-year-old will be the same. Just a cowardly act to ruin his life. Like, he's gonna be permanently damaged now. Police don't believe the victim and his attackers knew each other. Instead, the assault was provoked by a near miss further south on the M1 at Coomera. Um, children being forced to perform in public to raise money for the orphanages. The negative impacts of so-called volunteerism is an issue child protection groups are keen to highlight. There isn't a growing number of orphans in Cambodia, but there is a growing number of orphanages. Campaigners claim some parents regard a life in a tourist-supported orphanage as a better option for their children than growing up at home. <laughs> Just try and balance it. If you have your apple as your mid-morning snack, uh, try not to go for your juice in the, in the evening. Or in the same way, if you know that you're going for a glass of wine in that night, then try not to have fruit as your snack in the mid-morning or the afternoon. I just wanted him to get out of there. And he just kept coming back at me and he just kept coming back. But just like a scene out of a movie, she squeezes off a round at point blank range. Mother and daughter fighting for their lives finally able to run out of the store to safety. Tina says her daughter won't be working there anymore. As for the suspect, he's in police custody in the hospital. Now police say he could be connected to at least 10 other robberies in the area. And that means that children who have families are being placed in orphanages because families believe they'll get better care or better education or better health. So that's got to stop. New Zealand-based company International Volunteer HQ has decided to pull out of Cambodian orphanages. It says the debate around orphanage volunteering is distracting from its core mission. The six younger siblings are currently split, living in two foster homes. They communicate with their adult brothers and sisters via Skype. Karen Spiegel is mayor of Corona, California and works closely with the children's nurses. They talk about how warm and loving these kids are and so appreciative. Some of them had never really seen a toothbrush before. Things that we just take for granted mean so much to these kids. What followed has been described as a game of cat and mouse, as the men in the white van followed Brock up the M1, weaving in and out of traffic before both cars pulled over at Yadla. A group of up to 13 people got out of the van and attacked. Witnesses told police Brock was hit several times with a tyre iron before the van sped off. A near collision doesn't warrant the injuries that he, he received. Students, teachers and gun control activists are calling for a ban on assault weapons like the AR-15, the gun used in the shooting. Meanwhile, the NRA has not commented on the boycott movement. The change will be gradual, with orphanage placements being phased out by March next year. 
Longer established volunteer organisations say those wanting to help need to make sure they have the right priorities. We just want to make sure that we, uh, when we go out and volunteer, our people are actually doing the right thing, that they're actually contributing to the outcomes that actually really need it out there. Injuries that have left his family heartbroken again, just five weeks after Brock's stepdad died. Brock was working 10 hour days, six days a week, just to put a roof over our head. A GoFundMe page has been set up to help them as police call for help from the public.